evening, everybody. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and welcome to the famed Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where so many great fights have gone on through the years for tonight's main event. Ten rounds in the light heavyweight division. Boy, and we expect this to be a big night of action. We spoke with both fighters yesterday. Fireworks anticipated here tonight. Let's see. Hopkins is making his way to the ring. And I know you're used to seeing many ring walks where guys are really jacked up. This isn't one of them. Roy Jones Jr. is on his way to the ring right now. And you can see how excited he is for this one. Lots of confidence. We went over the rules in the dressing room. Let's have a good, clean fight. Touch them up. Ten rounds slated in the books tonight. Here's the first. Targeting each other, the exchange was something special. See, Bernard Hopkins has been having those Philly gym wars for so many years now that it's just second nature to throw your punches in accurate combination form. Oh, what a hook upstairs. Well played, straight right hand. I like that step back right there. Just enough to be out of danger, but still close enough to then land the counter punch. Well, that's what happens when you have that kind of experience. You're calm enough to know that range. Know where the beginning of the punch and the end of the punch is. Hopkins is putting his punches together now. That's a nice combination. A nice block by Roy Jones. He's moving around the ring. Well, you can see what he wanted to do there, but unable to land that body shot. And now targeting his opponent with the overhand right. Jones's edge is speed. He can get in and out. He can get you offensively. He can get away from you defensively. Yeah, he has radial tires, and you got to take some air out of those tires. No better place or way to do that than go downstairs. Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. Tremendous pace being set early on here between these two. Can't see this fight going the distance with this pace. No, not unless something changes, like moving their heads a little bit. And there he counters back against his opponent. Bernard Hopkins going old school there. B-hop is your basic one-two. Hopkins, this combination punching is working well here. He got hit, but he sent it right back. End of this round. Joe and Teddy sitting ringside with you. It gives us time to reflect on the bigger picture of boxing. You know, it was interesting. We had a fan walk up to you earlier today and say, Hey, I know you learned everything from the legendary Custom Auto, the great trainer. And he said to you, What's the one thing you took away from all your years with Cuz? What did you say to him? Well, it wasn't a paycheck. I'll tell you that much. Because Cuz didn't believe in paying you for that. He said you're going to college, you're getting a valuable uh, education, and you're not even being forced to pay a tuition. So I understood that. We worked seven days a week, so there was no union. Uh, Cuz believed in working on Sundays, so you couldn't go complain and say I'm being overworked. But I think seriously that the most important thing that I learned of course that from a technical standpoint you have to be really secure in those areas no matter how much talent a fighter has you have to teach them right 
teach them the fundamentals, but mentally. You have to understand that a fight is really always under fear. And you have to understand those dimensions, those parameters. And you have to be able to find a way to get in there, understanding how he feels mentally, and understanding how that can impair his judgment. Stop him from doing simple physical things. Fine hook by Roy Jones Jr. Real excellent work there. Threw the straight right hand, but didn't score with it. Best combination in the game, jab with the straight. That's it. That's it. Bernard Hopkins is doing well here with that two-punch combination. Wow, Teddy, he's got some great hand speed there. That combination was an example of it. Yeah, it was. You know, not a lot of power, not a lot of pop with it, but boy, it catches your attention. And you know what? That kind of speed can intimidate a guy and keep his opponent maybe from moving his hands later on. Blocking a score. That's a nice combination. Left hook to the body, right hand. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. Keep moving! He's showing what a skilled fighter he is with the counter punching. Well, the old times used to say when you calm in there, when you're in control in there, you can make him do what you want. He made him tie his shoelaces right there. He's committed to the combination punching now. It's working out well up top. And that's the end of round two. Hopkins is probably thinking that he just won that round. With good reason, Teddy. He was just busier. Yeah, he was busy. He's controlling the, the tempo. He's controlling the pace of the fight right now. You know, simply put, you're watching two guys and you say, that guy's the boss, that guy's not. Number three is underway. Jones's opponent landing an effective counter punch right there. Hopkins is able to land a nice clean left hand. He's winning the fight to me based on Roy Jones Jr.'s hurt by a big shot. He got rocked. He just got rocked, and he's still taking punches. The only way right now is to grab on a little bit, stop this flow. Roy Jones Jr.'s got to be feeling the impact of that uppercut. Good return fire that time. Hopkins is really in position to control things in this fight. If he can do what he did just there, and that's land a good, solid jab. He fires off the combination there, and it lands. Jones is well off the mark that time. Comes right back with a shot of his own. Missed the target with that hook. Bernard Hopkins is landing a combination here. That's what he does when he's at his very best. with a good solid uppercut after taking a shot. And another jab comes in. Hopkins is fully committed to utilize. Roy Jones Jr.'s hurt. Did you see that? Late goings here this round and he goes down. Can he survive it? corner needs to really get to their man after this round they need to treat him after that knockdown they also need to give him some sound advice what's the advice you give him well, first of all if they're going to get the chance to get to him he better move his head but the advice i would give him is hey you go out this next round and you kill some time tie him up a little bit right from the beginning don't worry about losing the early part of the fight or the early part of the round just get yourself back together okay listen to me. When he misses you with a punch, counter, counter.
Start of round number four, a chance for us to look at Teddy's scorecard. He's trailing three rounds to zip, Teddy. People will be looking at this and say, yeah, but he's throwing punches. But, Teddy, it's about throwing clean, effective punches. Exactly. And it's about not standing in front of your opponent. Big shot there. And he crashes to the canvas once again. He's gotten up before. What about this time? And he can't get up. Unable to beat the count. That's how you end a fight right there. Yes, he was controlling throughout, but he made a good, clean finish with the knockout. Yeah, as a trainer, you want to know, can a guy punch? Can a guy defend? You know, can a guy control distance? But you want to know, can a guy finish? He got the answer. Yes, he can finish. Good, enjoyable, entertaining fight it was. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore saying thanks for being with us.